Hey guys, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do an install on this Rhino Rack Backbone System and Pioneer Tray for the Ford Ranger. Now there's going to be a couple different tools and supplies that you're going to need to do this install, so let's head over to the bench and take a look. The install on this rack is pretty involved, so if you are concerned about drilling into your roof or cutting or making modifications to your truck like this, this is probably not gonna be the install for you and you may wanna look into doing a clamp-on crossbar system or something along those lines. But if you are committing to doing this full setup, it is a good roof rack and there's a couple different things you're gonna need. So one of the first main things is gonna be a Dremel or some sort of rotary tool with a cutting wheel on there and a little wire wheel to go with that will help. Obviously some safety equipment, you know, glasses, gloves, things like that for when you're cutting. A tape measure or a ruler is very helpful. Small screwdriver an Allen wrench, which should be a five millimeter, and typically Rhino Rack will include these in the kit, so you should get one with your rack when you buy it. Then you're gonna need a ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket, another smaller ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket and an extension. A 10 millimeter wrench can come in handy with this kit as well. Then some needle nose pliers, and a few things supply-wise in terms of a Sharpie, some silicone, and then obviously painter's tape and stuff like that to help with the cutting process. You're gonna need a heavy duty rivet gun, and I specify heavy duty because the smaller one-handed ones typically aren't strong enough to get the rivets through all the metal layers in this roof, so the heavy duty ones with more leverage are really helpful here. Now with that, you also probably want a mallet just to help with positioning some of the bars and things, and then obviously you're gonna need a drill and a 1 8 drill bit as well as a 3 16 drill bit. And another big part of this is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have these little drill stops or collar sleeves, depending on who you ask but these are gonna just clamp onto the actual bit itself and that's gonna prevent you from drilling too far through your roof and causing damage. So those are definitely a must have for this. And then obviously some WD-40 or something to help with the cutting process as you're drilling, just for lubrication's sake. So obviously we have everything we need right here, so let's get to work getting this bolted on. So the first part of this install is gonna require us doing some measuring so we can actually cut out this aluminum rail on the top of our truck. What we're gonna do is come to the back of the cab here and you'll see that there's a little bit of a split where there's an end cap for the rail and then the main section. And we're gonna go from this split and measure one and 9 16 inches out. And you can see I have a Sharpie line marked for where that's gonna be. And that'll be our first cut for this rail. Now from there, you're gonna to wanna to take the actual Rhino Rack rail that we'll be installing and put the little plastic caps on both ends of it because that does actually change the length just slightly. And you're just gonna line up the back with the mark that you already made. And you'll see that this rail is side specific, so it'll curve with the truck on the right side. And then we're gonna mark the front down here for where we need to make that cut, so that way we can pull out this whole center section. So as you can see at the front, I ran a piece of tape across to help me mark that first line, but we're actually gonna take some more painter's tape and kind of cover up the area around where we're gonna be cutting. Since we're gonna have to do this on the actual vehicle, you're gonna use your Dremel to actually slice through this, but it's a bit of a delicate process and having the tape there gives you a little bit of leeway if you accidentally bump it to where it's not gonna immediately scuff or scratch through the paint. So we're gonna lay that out first, then we'll grab the Dremel and make the cuts. I've got our Dremel plugged in now with this metal cutting disc on the end of it. So that's what we're gonna use to slice through here. Like I said, this is a bit of a delicate process and you definitely wanna have some safety wear, so your ears, eyes, and hands. So I'm gonna cut through on both sides and then we should be able to just pull this rail up. It's really only held in with adhesive in the center, so it's just a matter of prying from there. But let's get these cuts out of the way first.
Now for the front. With both ends of this bar cut, now, as you saw, I was able to pry it up and kind of pop this free, but there's just some adhesive under the rail that's holding it in place. So I'm gonna continue to just kind of pry this up as much as I can. There we go. So that adhesive starts to give. And now our rail's free. With the aluminum rail out of the way, it gives you a little bit better access now to see how your cuts actually look. And so at this point, I like to go back and just kind of slice over it, get it nice and clean and flat so there's not gonna be any obstructions. And then it helps if you have one of these little wire wheels that you can actually put into your Dremel or rotary tool to smooth that down and just avoid any sharp edges in there. Cleans it up a little bit and just gives you less to worry about when you're shoving your hands in here or trying to position that rail. So I'm gonna clean that up and then we'll pull the adhesive out of here too. With everything cut and smoothed down with that wire wheel, now I'm just gonna go through, vacuum up some of the extra metal shavings and kind of the dust that's collected up here. And then we're gonna peel the tape off and peel the adhesive out and make sure everything's clean so we can test fit that rail, see if it sets in there. And we should be looking good to start focusing on our holes after that. So setting our rail in here, it looks like everything is cut just about perfectly. So it's fitting between both end caps and it'll be a little bit hard when you test fit it to get it pushed in there all the way to see, but you can generally get a good idea if that plastic is gonna clear all the way down or how that's gonna sit. So ours is looking good, I'm happy with that. I think the next thing now is we're gonna need to go through and poke some holes through the bottom for where they're pre-drilled on the top. And then we're gonna lay this out and mark our holes on the actual truck's roof so we can drill those out and then we'll be able to throw some pop rivets in here to hold this down. So let's punch the holes through here first and then we'll get it marked out. Now that we have all of our indentations made, there's little nicks you'll see in the paint right where each indent is. I'm just gonna go over and tap each of those with the Sharpie so it's easier to see when I drill it now since the rail won't be in the way. Then we're gonna just use a pilot hole first to make a tiny little pinpoint through it and we can step it up from there to our 3 16th drill bit that's gonna give us the right size hole for the rivets. Now, before you start punching holes in your roof, you do wanna make sure that you have some sort of drill stop on here or collar sleeve that's gonna keep you from going all the way through, just because we are dealing with an area where there's curtain airbags underneath this. So really, you don't wanna go more than like a quarter inch, and you can kinda of use the rivets that come in the kit as a bit of a gauge for how much space you need on your drill bit. But you can see I've got it on here for both the drill bit I'm gonna use for our pilot holes and for the actual drill bit for the main holes. So we're gonna run through, punch all those without going all the way through the roof and through our headliner, and then we'll be good to go for the rivets. Now I'm stepping up to the larger drill bit to bore these out a little bit more for the rivets. So 
So before we actually set the rail in and rivet it in, now that we have the holes drilled, you want to take one of your rivets and just test your holes like this. Make sure that it is able to slide all the way through and it's not getting too bound up. So that middle one's a little bit tight, it looks like, but the rivet does go through it. These ones are all good as well. And you just want to confirm that those are bored out enough because it's a little bit harder to drill it once you have the rail in place and you've already started riveting some of it down. So now that that's cleared, the next thing we need to do is take these little sort of tar patches they give you with a little hole in them. And we're going to stick these over each of the holes in here to help weather seal around it. And it'll make contact with the foam on the bottom of our rail. And then if you want, you can also add some silicone inside these holes just to further prevent any rain leakage or anything like that getting inside of it. But the tar patch will do a pretty good job for most of it. With all the patches and the silicone on, we can now peel off this paper backing on the foam that's going to help weather seal the bottom of this. You're going to want to keep pressure on this rail now as you go to put the rivets through and there is actually a pattern for how you want to put them in instead of just going front to back. So it will say in your instructions but you can follow along here and we're going to start with the middle rivet first. So the good news is that with our channels installed on both sides of the truck, the hardest part of the install is over and now we can focus on actually getting the rails and the Pioneer tray put on. So I've got one of our backbone rails here and you're going to have some hardware specific to this rail which is going to look like this sort of square washer with a little stud on it as well as a regular washer and a nylock nut for the top. Now these little square washers with the stud are going to slide in from the back. You'll see a cutout in the channel where you can drop this down and push it forward. So we're going to push the first one all the way down. We'll put the second one to the middle. And the last one here on the corner. And all we have to do now is just get these lined up with the holes on the actual backbone bracket here. Okay, perfect. Now, with this lined up, we can drop on the washer first and then do the nut afterwards. And I think the best way that you can get these tightened down is by using a small quarter inch drive ratchet like this with an extension and then a 10 millimeter socket on the end. That gives you just enough space to get through some of these smaller gaps to actually lock it down. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna leave this a little bit loose when I put it on. That way, if we have to shift it front or back to line it up with the other rail, we can but we'll get it most of the way there so it stays where we want it. Okay, our backbone rail is tightened down most of the way. We have a little bit of play in it if we need, but what we need to do now is actually go over to our Pioneer tray and get the crossbar set up on that so we can mount it to these rails. So let's go do that first and then we'll bring the Pioneer tray up here and we can get the rest of this assembled. So right now we're looking at the bottom of our Pioneer tray. This section's the back and this is the front. And you're gonna have these two separate bars that are kind of angled on each end and we're gonna use a mallet to tap these straight. Now, where we want to line these up is where I've put the blue tape, uh, and it's on these kind of oblong holes that are on both far ends of the rack. So we're going to go ahead and just tap this forward.
Now we'll do the same on the front bar. Now to connect these bars at the ends through these oblong holes, we're gonna have a little bit of hardware that we need to put in there. So we're gonna use a channel nut and the actual bar with a washer on top of that. Then you're gonna take this Allen head screw with another washer and a spring washer in there. And these are gonna basically just thread through each other to lock it together. Once this is tightened down, just do the same on all the other three corners. Before you slide your Pioneer tray on, you do want to make sure that you unscrew this extension off your factory antenna so that way it doesn't fold it down. And once you have it on here, it should fit right between the slats and you can just thread this right back in. To attach our Pioneer tray to the backbone rails that we have, you're going to need a ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket and then you're going to have some hardware that's provided with a channel nut, a regular washer, a lock washer, and then of course the actual bolt for it. So we're going to take the channel nut off here and this is gonna slide down inside the factory rail. So positioning this can be a little bit tricky, but you'll basically get it in here and position it sideways slightly. You wanna get it lined up with this oblong hole on the bottom of the backbone rail, and then you can take your hardware from here and get it threaded through. All right, that's one down. Now let's do the other three corners. All right guys, we've got all four corners of the backbone locked down. It's really solid on here, but I am gonna go back and just finish tightening the three screws that hold this rail on since I left them a little loose for adjustment. And that's just gonna be a 10 millimeter wrench here to go ahead and get these locked in. Well guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this roof rack install. And as you can see, it leaves you with a great platform where you can put something like a tent or traction aids or some sort of camping gear, storage bins, things like that. It's really got a lot of utility to it. So if you guys are interested in picking up one of these racks for your truck, you can head down in the description below and we'll have a link that you can check out. And with that being said, make sure you hit subscribe while you're down there and we'll see you guys next time.